Alright, so a few new cards have been revealed. First of all, let's review one card that has already been reviewed, but uh, had a slight translation error in the way that it was revealed. Uh, we have King's Defender again. So last time we revealed it, I thought it was for every minion with Taunt, gain plus one durability, and I reviewed it and I thought it was a bad card. Now we see that it's actually, if you have a minion with Taunt, gain plus one durability, which is uh, worse. Like, it was already bad, but now it's real bad. In Arena, a 3-mana three 3-2 three weapon, like, uh, as a warrior, you're already going to have a lot of weapons also, and I think it's still going to be slightly less good. Like, maybe it'll become kind of an average card in Arena. A lot worse than Fire War Axe, that's for sure. Tournament Medic. 4-mana, 1-8. Uh, that's the first time we've seen any card with this stats. People compared this with Mogshin Warden. It does fill the same role. Mogshin Warden, a 4-mana, 1-7 with Taunt. Tournament Medic. Is this the solution to slowing the game down enough so that you can get value out of your Inspire cards? That is the question. And I will say this much. This card is actually good if you're up against specifically the face decks which play a lot of one health minions. I mean, the meta game would have to be it so incredibly fast for tournament medic to be good. And by the way, if the meta ever were to be all the one health minions, like Mogushin Warden, maybe that card's even better because you can actually ignore the tournament medic. The interesting question, though, is how many stats would you have to put in order for this to be good? Like, I think a 2-8 would have been too good, maybe? Or, like, competitive, even. But, like, how many stats do you have to put on a one-attack minion, which is interesting. And, like, you can also argue, oh, Inner Fire, Divine Spirit, that, that's a thing, but uh, it's not really a thing. But, like, what if it were a 110? Would that be good? And that would be interesting to think about, but... Eh, as is, no good. In Arena, it's also too slow, and the stats are too poor. Next up, the Coliseum Manager. Earlier, it was alluded that there would be some cards which made your hero power worse. This one is not necessarily one that makes your hero power worse, but a lot of people have joked about this, like, oh, hey, I really wanted a card that saps itself. Now you can do it with Coliseum Manager. L let's talk about the dream here. So, on turn three, you play the Coliseum Manager. They summon Huffer, as always. You attack with the Colosseum Manager into their Huffer, and then you use your hero ability and BAM! Your 2-1 is back in your hand. Yay! But not really yay, because if you're against a Hunter, you usually want to have a 2-1 on the board over having to spend 3 mana for another 2-5. So boo. Colosseum Manager, instead of being a card, perhaps you should have instead been a game, because Colosseum Manager sounds like a game that I would want to play on the PC, uh, one of those manager tycoon games where you like build up your coliseum, you add seating, you add entertainers, and then like you put on the different kinds of events. It'd be like roller coaster tycoon. Uh, coliseum manager, the game. Coliseum manager, the card though. No, uh, in arena, this card is going to be reasonable because Drew the Flame is really good in arena. Uh, three mana, two five, pretty good. I think it'll be like an average to above average card in arena. Flame Juggler, brother to Knife Juggler. I don't think there's too much to say about this card. It is a very solid card, I'll, I'll say that much first. Uh, I was kind of disappointed to see that it's deal one damage to random enemy. If it was deal one damage to random minion, it would be a lot stronger. It would actually be a counter to uh, face decks. But I understand, like, you can't, you potentially can't make a card that good. With Knife Juggler, like, sometimes you play it on turn two, and you don't have a juggle. In that case, Flame Juggler is actually better. Sometimes you're playing Knife Juggler with exactly one minion, and you get the same effect as Flame Juggler, and a 2-3 is actually probably better for the Knife Juggler type effect, because you want this effect to have more health. I think it's worse than Mad Bomber, and Mad Bomber is also not a bad card. Uh, Mad Bomber is a lot more random, but you get three bombs, and it hits everyone, including yourself, but... Kind of the point of this card is to play it early, to kill off an early minion. And it turns out that against a 1 health minion, when you play Mad Bomber, you have a 70 plus percent chance to kill it. And Flame Juggler, you have only a 50-50. Probably won't be seen. Unless, like, everyone starts running Face Hunter. Then Flame Juggler is actually a viable tech card, but then you would probably put in Mad Bomber instead. 
Uh, in Arena, 2 mana 2-3 two, is underwhelming, but 2 mana 2-3 with a slight bonus, hey, that's a card. Uh, this card is pretty good in Arena. Not insane, but pretty good. Probably um, competitive with Mad Bomber, even a little bit better, because dealing one damage to a random enemy, that's a real thing. Savage Combatant. If you thought Lost Tall Strider was good, then the power creep is real. We have a strictly better Lost Tall Strider here. 4 mana 5 4 beast with an inspire. Give your hero plus to attack this turn. That's pretty solid. Another card for the beast decks. Druid of the Fang finds another friend. Blizzards continue to add like a little bit of synergy here and there for that. That's nice. Some people have theorized that with more inspire type cards, which are or with more cards that give druids plus attack, you can actually combo with savagery. I don't see that happening for some time though. Savage Combatant has a cool design though because it's kind of almost a 4 mana 7-4. If you let it go with your hero power then it is. And a 4 mana 5-4 base stats, that's fine. The thing is, even when you put Inspire on a solid minion like this, it's a little less solid than a 4 mana 4-5 four, and it might not be run just because... Uh, 4 mana 5-4 stats, it can be taken out efficiently sometimes. But I actually think this card could be run. I mean, it doesn't even have to be an Inspire type deck, just a solid card. The main problem is these days, the 4 mana go-to minion is the 4 mana Piloted Shredder. So you have to compare Savage Combatant with Piloted Shredder. And the problem is when those two come up against each other, the Piloted Shredder kills it and then gets a 2 mana cost minion on top. And the Savage Combatant is just sad. It is worth mentioning that against the Shredder, it is possible to coin it out, or innervate it out, and then um, you get to just hero power, and your hero power takes out the Shredder, and that's pretty fun, and then your Savage Combatant can beat up whatever comes out of the Shredder, or just attack face. Uh, this card is pretty strong to innervate out, because you can start using your hero powers earlier, potentially, maybe. It's a fine card, the stats are good, the Inspire effect is actually a thing. It turns your hero power into a, uh, not, not quite draw a claw and use it, but kind of tr kind of claw, kind of. The thing is, I don't quite see this replacing Shredder in Druid. So the question is, is this card going to be added along with Shredder and Keeper of the Grove? That starts to be too many four drops. And Swipe, you already have six four drops that you run in Druid. Do you add in another one? And if so, do you add one copy of it? And if so, can you possibly cut any of them? You can't cut Keeper, that card's too good. I think this card is worse than Shredder. I don't think you can cut Swipe. So, it's a tough place to fit it in. Uh, in Arena, this card's really good though. And this is, of course, a Web Spinner buff. Good card for a hunter to get off of Web Spinner. Clockwork Knight. Eh, solid card. 5 mana, 5-5, five, five, mech. Uh, you don't actually see that many cards, which are 5 mana, 5-5. Five, five. Lothab comes to mind, of course. And 5-5 five, five is a pretty good spot to be. It dodges the uh, very heavy 4 attack spot, which a lot of classes deal with 4 attack, and there's always that piloted shredder in a lot of cards, in a lot of decks. Will this card be good enough to put into the mech decks? An interesting question. Mech decks tend to be pretty fast, and this one can kind of be thought of as a 6-6. This one does stand up to Belcher, pretty nice, and it gives you the additional benefit. Is Felreaver better? Felreaver wasn't really being played that many times. It does dodge BGH, but it just might not be quite fast enough. But it might be good enough in a slower mech. I will mention that there was another 5 mana 5-5 five, five, uh, in Priest, which was also a mech, which added 3 health to a minion, and that one never took off. Uh, ma mainly because Priest was never a great mech class, I guess, because they didn't have anything that benefited mechs that much other than that card. So the fact that a 5 mana 5-5, five, five, which gave a mech plus 3 health, maybe... Uh, that wasn't played. Maybe that goes to show that Clockwork Knight perhaps wouldn't be played. A solid card, reasonable, but I don't think it'll be that good.
And uh, actually, as a correction, you got four health instead of three health. That mech was so good, and yet it still wasn't really played. So, oops. So this card gives two stats instead of four stats when the priest card wasn't good enough to be played in priest. Um, but I think that priest card would have been played in other classes. So Clockwork Knight, nah, maybe. Maybe it'll make the cut. Maybe not. Uh, in Arena, 5 mana 5-5 five five is pretty solid. Especially one with a slight bonus. The bonus... Uh, given that this expansion is rather large and they're certainly not going to be a share of mech cards, uh, it'll be good if you get to fit in the other mechs, if you have more mechs. And even then, a 5 mana 5-5, five five, it's like, it's okay. So, average to slightly above average card in Arena. Coming up, the legendary cards, we have a set of twins, uh, which don't have to be played together, they're independently good, they independently have good stats. Idis Darkbane, 3 mana, 3, 4. Uh, currently, Spider Tank is not being run in any actual constructed deck, which isn't mech. So the 3 mana, 3, 4 wasn't quite good enough. So we're going to toss in a pretty strong ability with it. Whenever you target this minion with a spell, deal 3 damage to random enemy. That's a pretty strong effect. Now, the thing is... There's no deck currently out there which focuses so much on targeting minions with spells. I think the closest one I can think of at the moment is Paladin Face, which runs Blessing of Might and Blessing of Kings. And I think this card is good enough to fit into that Face Paladin deck. Uh, priests target minions with spells a lot. Uh, Powerwood Shield, Valen's Chosen. The bad news? is that that uh, dragon that came out, 4 mana, 3, 5. Like, I had actually reviewed the card as, like, oh yeah, maybe Priest would use it there, but it's probably too slow, and it did end up being too slow. So 4 mana, 3, 5 is too slow for only a plus 1, plus 1 benefit. This benefit is better than plus 1, plus 1. So I, I like the card. Uh, it's, it's powerful stats, and it has an effect which doesn't fit into any deck currently that much. That's cool. The problem with Priest is indeed that Dark Cultist isn't being run in Priest, and that's a 3 mana 3 4 with a really good death rattle ability. It just turns out that Priest is getting too many 3 drops. Uh, some people are theorizing spare parts, you can put it in, but I don't think you can get that many spare parts to make that work, but perhaps maybe this fits in Mech Mage. You usually get something like uh, about 2 or 3 spare parts, and you can uh, put in more spare parts type stuff. Because this effect is pretty good, dealing 3 damage to a random enemy, that's a lot. Yeah, that Flame Waker deck especially. You've got the Flame Waker, this guy, this gal rather, can be Flame Waker's best friend potentially. Uh, so yeah, I see potential for this card. It's definitely built to, with the meaning to be competitive, because the stats are good and the ability is strong. Uh, we'll see. Especially if there are more spells that target minions. One of the reasons why I valued Flame Waker wrong originally is because it was just a 3 mana 2 4 and I was like okay the effect sure maybe you trigger it once and then it's a 3 mana 2 4 which deals 2 random damage and that's alright but what I underestimated was the fact that it can stick around and continue to wreak havoc uh, I just Dark Bane is just like Flame Waker but the condition for activating her is a lot more specific and tough to use. The ability is so strong and the space line stats are so strong that it's hard to imagine this card won't at least be tried out somewhere. Uh, in Arena, it'll certainly be above average because a lot of the legendaries have low stats due to, their, um, due to them doing uh, weird effects. 3 mana 3-4 three, has always been strong in Arena. Spider Tank is a top pick. There's some um, legendaries that are really, really good in Arena. This one turns out to be quite good. It'll be beaten out by the really, really co good cards, but you'll never really be sad to pick up a 3 mana 3 4. We've got the Twinsies, Fiola Light Bane. When of you target the minion with a spell, gain Divine Shield. I think that's a little bit worse than Ida Stark Bane's. I guess, like, the example to give is when you compare a random 3 damage to a random enemy. Uh, sometimes that hits face, true, but 
It's kind of comparable to Flame Cannon, like maybe one mana worth of effect. Gain Divine Shield, okay, that one's kind of real too. Divine Shield gaining is kind of like a one mana effect. Uh, when you go Coin Fuel Lightbane, turn two, and then turn three, you put a buff card on her, and then you attack into an opponent's minion. That's tremendous value. And of course, three mana, three, four is still nothing to scoff at. Blizzard has been wary of repeatable Divine Shield effects. That's why that Paladin mech card, which gained Divine Shield whenever you put a mech in play, uh, I'm having a tough time remembering all these bad cards, uh, was never played and was priced really highly. Fuel of Lightbane, though, that's competitive. Three mana, three, four, so you're already fine and. If you can target her with a spell, then you're getting really good value. So uh, I reckon that if you're playing Idis Darkbane in a deck, you're probably playing Fuel of Lightbane also, just because they're both competitive and they both encourage you to target minions with spells. So I guess I would rate her as also highly competitive and a good card. And you would put her in pretty much every deck that you put in uh, Idis Darkbane in. In Arena, pretty much going to rate her around the same. Probably a little bit worse than Idis, but still good. And with that, We've covered all of the existing cards out there, but there's one more card that no one has seen before. What could this be? Yes indeed, a Trump exclusive look at the new card. Very exciting. What will it be? What will the, what will this card do? I'm building up the hype! Oh my gosh! It's an exclusive look. New card. I'm, I'm very happy that Blizzard has given me the honor of revealing this card, or, or revealing a card. I think it's a cool thing they're doing. They're spreading these new cards out to everyone. How exciting could, be, could a common card be anyways? We shouldn't put our hopes up too much, but I will say this. This combines two mechanics which you have never seen combined onto one card before. We've theorized that with stealth, you could do some really insane things. Because the problem with Inspire, right, is that y you don't get to use the Inspire sometimes. You need to use it the turn that it comes out. But say a card had stealth and Inspire, then that would be really good, potentially. Now, now here's the bad news. It's not stealth. I mean, it's not, it's not inspire. But it is stealth. So let's see what we got here. We have everyone a moment of silence for Silent Night. I'll let this uh, sink in to you for a moment. Stealth and divine shield. <laughs> Two mechanics you have never seen put together on one card before. <laughs> when, when I looked at this card at first, I immediately combined <laughs> I mean <clears throat> When I looked at this card, I immediately <laughs> Oh man. Okay. It's a lot of hype. Thanks, Blizzard, for giving me this card. Alright. So when I looked at this card, I immediately compared it with Shielded Minibot. And Shielded Minibot is a very good anti-aggro card at the beginning and puts on the pressure, deals with an immediate threat, and you play it out on two mana, and that's really good. So the problem is Silent Knight faces a comparison immediately with Shielded Minibot. It uh, compares very unfavorably for the purpose, but you know, Shielded Minibot is only a class card. The other card you can compare Silent Knight with is Gilblin Stalker, which is a card that was run in Priest a little bit, two mana, two, three, with stealth. And the reason why Gilblin Stalker is good is because you can toss that out on turn two, and on turn three, you throw out the Valen's Chosen on it, something you can guaranteed buff. On, on top of that, you already have a three mana 2 2 stealth also. You have a Shade of Nax Ramus, and you can compare that directly with that. Uh, so instead of gaining plus one, plus one every turn, you gain Divine Shield. So basically, what we have here looks really bad on first hand but I had so much time to think about it so where do you use the Silent Knight? Here's the problem with Shade of Naxxramas I guess if you were to compare it. 
Shade of Naxxramas, when it first came out, I theorized, okay, so you use the Shade of Naxxramas, you play it out early, it, gain, it grows a lot, uh, and then you can actually put all the buffs on it and then just one turn kill your opponent, and that's great. The problem with that is that you can, like, get it health-fired, you can get it flame-struck, that kind of stuff can happen, but if you want to put out a card on the field and not have it die, this is your solution. The Silent Knight. They AoE it? You can't AoE it! They can't target it with stealth, so... Like, you can actually just play a minion and be really secure that the opponent cannot deal with it. So, that's a cool concept, which has not been done yet. Even though it seems weird for a card to have both stealth and divine shield, that is the purpose. It's a card that you can put out on the field, and you can be secure that you can't deal with it. Other than Kodo. But it's okay, Kodo isn't a thing. That being said, this is a really specific edge case, and it seems difficult to imagine that you would have a game plan of being so specific that you want to put in this card that doesn't die to AoE as opposed to like Shade of Next Rims, which you can just leave sit on the table and at the end it'll be easier to one turn kill them. Because that's the purpose of the knight. It's too slow to actually deal with the early game and it's too safe compared to Shade of Nax Ramus. Uh, Shade of Nax Ramus can actually be used to one turn kill easier. Of course you would run Minibot in almost every deck if you could, but only Paladin comes out, but if you add one card add one mana to Minibot and it's not very good. On top of the one turn kill thing, like you can actually just play this and then guarantee to have a buff be put on it, turn three silent knight, turn four blessing of kings, you get your choice of trade. So, hey, that's a thing. I rate the card as unplayable in arena, probably also too slow. Because if you wanted a card to stick around and to like put kings on, you would put harvest golem also, right? Yeah. And if you wanted a card to one turn kill in the late game, you would put in Shade of Nax Ramus. There you have it. The exclusive Trump look at a new card. I'm glad you all could join me here. And thank you for uh, sending <laughs> thank you for sending a card over. I appreciate it.